Aung San was the man most responsible for Burma's eventual independence in 1947 and is often cited as a hero and as the father of the nation in modern Myanmar. In this video, we will examine Aung San's transformation from a military to a political leader following the end of World War II. We will look at how Aung San negotiated and managed his relationships with both the British government and local Burmese leaders with the eventual result of peacefully leading Burma towards independence while convincing most Burmese leaders to follow his direction. Part 1. The Return of British Administration In the summer of 1945, shortly before the end of World War II, the British government in London issued its White Paper of Burma policy, its formal plan for post-war Burmese independence. This policy called for a gradual road to independence in the manner that former British colonies like Canada, Australia and New Zealand used to become independent. The plan called for elections beginning in approximately 1948, before which an unelected cabinet led by the Governor General would stabilize the country, and after which Burma would slowly transition into an autonomous member of the British Commonwealth. The plan did not include the areas consisting of modern Shan, Kaya, Chin and Kachin states to be included in Burma, since these were culturally distinct areas that were administered as separate colonies. For various reasons, this plan would be challenged and rejected by Aung San and most other leaders who achieved power in Burma after World War II. World War II ended on September 12, 1945. Following the end of the war, Aung San's force was renamed the Patriotic Burmese Forces, with Aung San recognized as its Inspector General, then gradually disarmed by the British as the Japanese were driven out of various parts of the country. Following the war, Aung San worried that the British would attempt to reorganize his forces in order to disband them, and argued against this by arguing that a Burmese military was necessary in order for Burma to evolve into a fully self-governing member of the British Commonwealth of Nations. However, after the general demobilization of British soldiers began, following the surrender of Japan on September 2, 1945, he led a coalition of local organizations in demanding full sovereignty. The leaders of the patriotic Burmese forces, while disbanded, were offered positions in the Burma army under British command, according to the Kandy Conference Agreement with Lord Louis Mountbatten in Ceylon in September 1945. The delegates agreed that the new Burmese army would be composed of 5,000 of Aung San's Japanese-trained Bamar soldiers and 5,000 British-trained soldiers, most of whom were either Chin, Kachin, or Karen. The army was to be led by two inspectors general, one who would be Bamar and a second who would be from an ethnic minority community. Mountbatten met with Aung San on September 6th, but their discussions were confined to the disbandment of Aung San's forces and their reorganization within the new Burmese army. The agreements made at the conference were signed by Mountbatten, Tan Tun, and Aung San. Following the conference on September 25, 1945, Aung San resigned from the military with the intention of re-entering civilian politics. By the time that the Burmese Governor General, Sir Reginald Jorman Smith, arrived back in Rangoon on October 17, 1945, Aung San had formed a coalition that included virtually all political, ethnic and religious groups in the country, under the leadership of the Anti-Fascist People's Freedom League. Most of the Burmese army had been disbanded via the Kandy Conference, but it continued to exist as Aung San's personal militia. Dorman Smith, influenced by the pre-war Burmese Prime Ministers, Sir Pa Tun and Sir Tun Ong Ja, attempted to bring Aung San into his cabinet, offering all positions but defense and foreign relations to Aung San and his supporters. But Aung San rejected this proposal, making it clear that his intention was to fight for self-determination by leading the government himself. Since he was charged with implementing the White Paper, this was not a demand that Dorman Smith had the power to give. Relations between Dorman Smith and Aung San deteriorated, and within two months of his return to Burma, he and Aung San were in direct confrontation. As the head of the Anti-Fascist People's Freedom League, Aung San promoted the pursuit of civil disobedience while arguing against the use of force. During this time, Aung San sometimes spoke to communists and communist leaders using terminology sympathetic to them, but remained distant from the Communist Party itself. Aung San wrote to the communist guerrilla leader Usaida in Arakan, saying that he supported Usaida's guerrilla fight against the British, 
but that he would cooperate with the British for tactical reasons. In December 1945, he reorganized his formally disbanded soldiers into a paramilitary organization instead. The People's Volunteer Organization continued to wear uniforms and drill in public. The PVO was personally loyal to Aung San and his party rather than the government. The ranks of the PVO continued to grow from then to independence, and by 1947 the PVO had over 100,000 members. Unfortunately, the PVO developed into a somewhat nefarious organization, involved in politics, the black market, and organized crime. The British initially ignored it, but by April 1946, Dorman Smith ordered a halt to its military training. This led to the Tanta Bin incident, in which an unarmed mob protesting the arrest of 11 PVO members were fired upon by the police, killing three people and injuring six. Aung San's party was able to use this incident as leverage to put pressure on the British administration to accelerate Burma's independence. The relationship between Aung San and Burma's minority communities were not initially good. In January 1946, a victory festival was held in the Kachin capital of Michina. Governor Dorman Smith was invited to attend, but neither Aung San nor anyone from his party were, due to their connection with the Burma Independence Army. In March 1946, allegations that Aung San had committed a war crime while working with the Japanese, the public execution of a Muslim headman in Tatan, were published in newspapers across Burma, India, and Britain. According to these allegations, the headman had been accused of working on the side of the British to organize a resistance against the Japanese. After tying the headman up, Aung San had allegedly attempted to behead the headman with his katana but failed and the man was finished off with a pistol by a subordinate. These allegations were likely made public by Tun Ok, a political rival, who claimed to have witnessed the event. Governor Dorman Smith was not sure whether, or how, Aung San should be arrested for the crime. Monbatten sent a telegram strongly arguing against arresting Aung San, while several security officials worried that arresting him would lead to a rebellion or a mutiny within the Burmese army. Lieutenant General Harold Briggs, the most senior military officer then in Burma, warned that arresting Aung San would lower world opinion of the British administration, especially in Asia. He also argued that the main goals of the British administration in Burma were economic recovery, increasing rice production to meet global shortages, and preparing the country for self-government, and that arresting Aung San would undermine all of these goals. An influential director of public relations, Reverend George Appleton, argued that the Burmese people did not naturally think in terms of justice or reason, but more in terms of personalities and relationships and so would not naturally understand or accept Aung San's arrest. In the end, since public opinion seemed against arresting Aung San, and since the British Army was unavailable in the event that it led to a disturbance, Dorman Smith and his administration decided against arresting Aung San. In April 1946, Dorman Smith changed his mind about whether Aung San should be arrested after receiving a petition from the murdered headman's widow but was directly told not to act by Sir Pethwick Lawrence, the Secretary of State for India and Burma, who was then negotiating Indian independence with its leaders and did not want any disturbance to jeopardize these talks. On May 7, 1946, Dorman Smith declared a general amnesty for war crimes committed during World War II with the agreement of British Prime Minister Clement Attlee. Despite his many protestations to his superiors that Aung San was the politician most important to the post-war stability of Burma, on June 14, 1946, Dorman Smith was recalled from his post, largely due to his inability to negotiate with Aung San. When Aung San later heard about the deliberations about whether or not he should be arrested from Burma's interim governor, Sir Henry Knight, he said that he would have agreed to stand trial if the government had decided to charge him, but noted that, if so, the government would also need to charge thousands of other people for similar crimes committed during the war. Part 2. The Aung San Atli Agreement and the Panglong Conference By mid-1946, it was clear that Aung San was the most powerful and popular political figure in Burma. Newspaper articles about his activities were written about him on a daily basis, in which he was often called the Hero of Burmese Youth, and a 
national hero. By the time that the new Governor General of Burma, Sir Herbert Rance, arrived in Burma on September 6, 1946, the country was in the middle of a general strike, which the governor was only able to end through the intervention of Aung San. Rance agreed to recognize and negotiate directly with Aung San, possibly to distance them both from the Communist Party of Burma, which openly advocated violent revolution and was active in several areas of the Burmese countryside. He also agreed to appoint Aung San to the position of Councillor for Defence on the Executive Council, the provisional cabinet made in lieu of the upcoming Burmese national election. On September 28, 1946, Aung San was appointed to an even higher position of Deputy Chairman, making him effectively the fifth Prime Minister of the Burma British Crown Colony. Aung San had at first worked closely with the Burmese Communist Party, but after they began criticizing him for working with the British, he banned all communists from the anti-fascist People's Freedom League on November 3rd, 1946. By this point, Aung San was, to all intents and purposes, Prime Minister, though he was still subject to a British veto. On September 20th, 1946, British Prime Minister Clement Attlee announced a new policy towards Burma and invited Aung San to visit London in order to negotiate the conditions of Burmese independence. At a press conference during a stopover in Delhi, while on the way to meet Attlee in London, Aung San stated that the Burmese wanted complete independence and not dominion status, and that they had no inhibitions of any kind about contemplating a violent or non-violent struggle, or both, in order to achieve it. He concluded that he hoped for the best, but was prepared for the worst. He arrived in Britain by air in January 1947, along with his deputy Tin Tut, who he considered his brightest official. Atli and Aung San signed their agreement on the terms of Burmese independence on January 27, 1947. Following the Burmese elections in 1947, Burma would join the British Commonwealth, though its government would have the option to leave. Its government would control the Burmese army once Allied armies had withdrawn. A constitutional assembly would be drawn up as soon as possible, with the resulting constitution presented to the British Parliament as soon as possible. And Britain would nominate Burma's entrance into the newly founded United Nations. The agreement was not unanimous. Two other delegates who attended the conference, Usa and Takin Basain, refused to sign it. And it was denounced in Burma by Aung San's critics, including Tan Tun and Takin So. No delegates representing Burma's ethnic minorities were present, and both Karen and Shan leaders sent messages warning that they would not consider any agreement signed at the conference legally binding to their communities. Following their return to Burma, Usa and Basain resigned from Aung San's executive council and attempted to form a rival political party, but never really emerged as serious political opposition to him. Since 1922, the British administration of Burma had been split into three colonies, including not only Burma, but also the Shan states and the frontier areas, which were indirectly governed and more like confederated protectorates than true colonies. Since Aung San desired these areas to also leave the British Empire with Burma, he convened a conference of their most powerful leaders in the hopes of convincing them to join Burma when the country declared independence. Two weeks after the signing of the agreement with Britain, Aung San signed an agreement at the second Panglong Conference on February 12, 1947, with leaders representing the Shan, Kachin, and Chin people. In this agreement, these leaders agreed to join a united independent Burma under the conditions that they would have full autonomy and the right to secede in 1958 after 10 years. Recalcitrant minority leaders were won over by Aung San's insistence that their regions would be given generous funding from the central government for roads and schools, that the government he intended to create would not discriminate on the basis of sex, religion, or ethnicity, and that he intended the Burmese military to be led by officers from many different ethnic groups, not just Bamar men. Karen leaders attended the conference only as observers and were not part of the agreement. The Karen leaders hoped for a separate Karen state within the British Empire, but these plans were frustrated by the fact that the Karen population was widely distributed across Lower Burma and not centralized in a well-defined geographical area like most other minority groups. 
Aung San recognized the opposition of many Karen leaders to his government, and in the two weeks following the Panglong Conference, he toured Karen areas in traditional Karen clothes, giving public speeches and attempting to gain support for Burmese independence. At one event held in Kapali, Aung San attracted a crowd of 20,000 people from the surrounding area. Aung San's extreme personal popularity during the tour raises the possibility that, had he survived the process of Burmese independence, he may have been able to negotiate with and prevent the Karen insurrection that occurred in 1948, several months following independence. The date of the signing of the Panglong Agreement has been celebrated in Burma as Union Day, even though Ne Win effectively dissolved any agreement between the Burmese government and Burma's minority communities following his coup in 1962. Criticisms of the Panglong Agreement have always been that, despite Aung San's many promises, the agreement included few details about exactly how and when these promises would be kept. Most of the delegates agreed to sign the Panglong Agreement due to their trust in the credibility of Aung San's leadership and due to his personal charisma, rather than any pre-existing internal movements demanding a union with Burma. And when Aung San died prematurely, subsequent Burmese leaders were unable to follow through on his promises. Part 3. Aung San's Government The general election held in April 1947 was not ideal. The Karen, Mon, and most of Aung San's other political opponents, notably Usa, Basain, and Dr. Ba Ma, boycotted the process. Since they ran virtually unopposed, every candidate run by Aung San's party was elected. In the end, Aung San's Anti-Fascist People's Freedom League received about 60% of the popular vote and won 171 of the 182 seats contested for election to the Constituent Assembly. In addition to these seats, there were an additional 24 seats which were reserved for Karen representatives, 4 which were reserved for Anglo-Burmese, and 45 only for representatives from the areas of Chin, Kachin, Kaya, and Shan states. In July, Aung San convened a series of conferences at Sorrenta Villa in Rangoon to discuss the direction the new country would take following its independence. Following the 1947 election, Aung San began to form his own cabinet. It was intended to be as representative as possible of the country's ethnic and religious diversity. In addition to ethnic Burmese statesmen like himself and Tin Tut, he also persuaded the Karen leader, Man Ba Kang, the Shan chief, Sao San Tun, and the Tamil Muslim leader, Abdul Razak, to join his cabinet. No communists were invited to participate. The Burmese constitution that Aung San helped to draft following his electoral victory was federal and democratic. It gave the minority areas of Chin, Kachin, Kaya, and Shan states local autonomy and granted them the right to leave following a decade of independence, that is, after 1958, if they felt that their presence within the new country was unsatisfactory. The text and organization of the new constitution borrowed heavily from the constitutions of Ireland, India, and Yugoslavia. The period of Burmese independence was one of great hope for many Burmese national leaders and their people. Since the time of Aung San's electoral victory, many people have believed that, had Aung San survived, the second half of the 20th century would have been experienced much differently by the Burmese people at large. Thank you for watching. In our next video, we will discuss the circumstances of Aung San's assassination. Many people know the identity of the man convicted of the crime, but in addition to describing this narrative, we will also examine two other theories of the event that have been widely reported since then. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you would enjoy one of these other historical videos. If you did not enjoy this video, thank you for watching anyway. Please consider leaving some feedback below and we can discuss it in the comments.